alligators in the lake. Close that I noticed this weird glint in her eye. 
Still, she was a damsel in distress. Although I should have known better. No one who has that much money is ever really in distress. I had to tell someone about it. It's probably stupid my coming to you. You're never going to believe me anyway. Why don't you try telling me, Mrs. Soames? My husband is trying to kill me. Have you gone to the police? No, I can't. I don't have any evidence. The police are very fussy about these things. Well, actually, Mrs. Soames, so am I. It's very hard to investigate something when there are no facts at hand. What do you want? A body? My body? Is that it? Please, calm down. Perhaps you'd like to tell me something about your husband. He's a dermatologist. Pardon? You find that funny, do you? No, of course not. Everyone always does, and of course they don't say why they find that funny. Everyone's too polite. Please, Mrs. Soames, just continue. It's a disgusting profession. Can you imagine spending the entire day squeezing pimples and scraping scabs? No, I can't. It's awful. Of course he wasn't a dermatologist when I married him. He was a medical student. A handsome young medical student. Oh, he's still handsome. I should have listened to my mother. Never trust clean, cut, fine, upstanding young men. They always disappoint you. Uh, Mrs. Soames, I'm a little pressed for time. Could you please get to the point? How exactly has he tried to kill you? It's been gradual, actually. How gradual? I only have the next hour free. Well, we've been married for about five years now. He's become more and more distant. Hmm. This Christmas, we went to the Everglades for our second honeymoon. Roger had taken up photography. I was swimming in the lake, and he was telling me where to swim. I thought he wanted a good picture. And suddenly, I heard something behind me. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a tail. A tail? A large, scaly tail. I screamed blue murder and swam to shore with that thing coming after me. I don't know how I got there in time, but I made it. I screamed and I screamed and I screamed. And do you know what he did? He took pictures. An alligator and he took pictures. Are you sure it was an alligator? You just saw the tail. Besides, lakes don't have alligators. Swamps do. It was an alligator. They're all over Florida. They flushed them down the toilet. Pardon? Kids. Kids. They buy baby alligators and they flush them down the toilet and they wind up in the sewage system and all over the place. Great, big, bloody alligators. Hell, it might have been a crocodile, but with all those gnashing teeth, does it really matter? I mean, does it really matter? Do you have the pictures? Right. The evidence. Yes, I do. Right here in my purse. See? There's one of me. Screaming. Yeah. And there's another one of me screaming. Right. Are there any of the alligator? I'm getting to that. See? There it is. I see you swimming, and I see a lake. And there's a tail. I don't see a tail. I see a blur off to one side. Could be a tree stump out of focus. Well, that's what alligators look like, isn't it? Tree stumps. They float along the water, looking like logs, and then they slash you all to pieces. I'm sorry, Mrs. Soames, but I don't think I can help you. There isn't sufficient evidence for me to go on, and there is a charge for my service. I'm afraid I don't have any money with me right now. You'll have to bill my husband. So you want evidence, do you? Mrs. Soames, evidence is not something you manufacture. I think it's best we forget the entire... All right. I'll get some evidence. Goodbye, Mr. Todd. No, please. I can't handle... Your case. I made a brief assessment of the situation. Not case. I'll let it go with that. It tastes odd. It's the hoisinsa. It has a chalky sort of taste. It's 100-year-old hoisinsa. I ordered it specially. <laughs> Don't beg, Trixie. Honey, I she wouldn't let her in while we're eating. She whines all through dinner. I tried to get her out, but she was... Would... Oh, here. Now be quiet. Don't do that. What? I mean, don't feed her at the table, dear. It only encourages her. Sorry, dear. Shit. What? I left the fried veggies on the stove. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I knocked it over. Oh, Trixie, you might as well. I asked you not to give it to her. Well, it's too late now, isn't it? How am I supposed to eat with that disgusting racket going on? Honey, she's a dog. How else is she supposed to eat? She should eat in the kitchen. I'm sorry. And you've worked so hard. It's 
sweet of you to take these gourmet cooking classes and whip up little treats for me. Just have some veggies. Oh, thank you, dear. You've hardly taken any. I guess I'm not that hungry. I had a big lunch. You went out to lunch? Yes, I met friends. Oh, that's good. You should go out more. Yes, I guess so. Oh, by the way, I got a bill in the mail from a Madame Farrell. Another specialist? Yes, dear. She wants $300 a week to burn six candles. 50 bucks a candle for 159 weeks. I hope you don't mind, dear. Mind? Of course I mind. 300 bucks a week for some nutso religious fanatic? Why don't you go to a doctor? You no, know it's done no good. Well, let me look at it again. No. Look, I've had it up to the eyeballs with these gazoonies. The last one put a curse on me. I'm telling you, honey, I get one more bill from one more Madame Pharaoh, and she's going to get a mouthful of teeth. Now, I mean it. Either you go to a specialist, a real specialist, or you pay for this shit yourself. Yes, dear. I mean it, honey. Mr. Todd's office, can I help you? Yes, this is Dr. Soames, and I'd like to discuss a rather absorbent bill I've received from you for services I did not commission. Oh, just a minute, please. Richard, there's a man on the phone who sounds rather upset. He doesn't want to pay his bill. That's okay, I'll take it. I had an uneasy sensation that I was going to be talking to Dr. Stone's husband of the nutcase. And I had an even uneasier sensation that, unlike Mrs. Stone, he wasn't going to be pleasant. Hello, Richard Todd here. Listen, creep face, how dare you take advantage of a mentally deranged woman? Hey, excuse me, who's this? Soames. Roger Soames. My wife came to see you last week, and you, you mercenary little toad. You took her for all she was worth. Hey, excuse me, but when some loony tune comes barging into my office... There, you speak that way about my wife. I've a good mind to punch you in the nose. I'm sorry, sir, but when I have to listen to a three-hour rant about alligators, well, I just have to... What's your angle? Angle? Foot therapy? Magnetoelectrofield impulses? Astrology? Tarot cards? Candles. Are you fond of candles? Sir, I don't know what your wife was talking about, and I certainly oh, don't... am I not being polite? Do you actually call it a profession? All right, I'll play. What's your profession, guru, Swami? I'm a private investigator, and if you don't mind, I think I'll hang up now. A what? A private investigator. And she told you about the alligator? Yes, several alligators, in fact. An entire city. I'll be right over. Christ. Possibly the most damning thing I could say about Roger Soames was that he looked like a dermatologist, incredibly urbane, a facade that develops after years of devising a thousand benign ways to save this, or pimple, or pockmark. Oh yes, your face has concave indentations of subcutaneous mucilage. Dr. Soames went into his well-bred zit routine, but I wasn't fooled for a second. I'm sorry for shouting at you. I thought you were like all the others. My wife collects these people. Parasites, really. They feed off her delusions and profit by them. You see, my wife is deranged. Yes, I gathered that. Before we begin the session... I see. Of course, you'd like to change. Here you are. Yes, thank you. I don't mean to be rude about it, but I, too, am subject to parasites. You place too high a value on money, Mr. Todd. I place a value on time, Dr. Soames. Money pays for my time. It's as simple as that. I value beauty. You? Yeah. Pardon? I suppose that accounts for my wife's obsession. Her condition. It's all she thinks about. Her condition? Don't be coy, Mr. Todd. You've seen her face. Yes? A mess. Wow. I really wouldn't There's say There's no that. need to be polite. It's hideous. Of course, it defies treatment. I tried to examine it myself, but Chrissy won't let me get near her. My wife used to be a very beautiful woman. Of course, you'll say she's still a beautiful woman, but something's happened to her, and it's not just the disease. You see, I believe in beauty, Mr. Todd. Beauty is, in fact, skin deep. What is revealed on the surface is what goes on in the soul. And my wife's soul has undergone a profound transformation. She has become a crone. A purple crone. Purple? What's your word for it? Puce? Oh, it was insignificant at first. A small purple blotch on the temple. And then it started growing till it spread all over her face. Of course, just the one side. I always try and keep on her left. I can't bear to look at it. I know it's wrong of me. It's just that it has such a horrible, squishy quality. Dr. Soames, 
Yeah? Your wife doesn't have a skin disease. Of course she has a skin disease. Not when I saw her. Well, yeah, sure. Sometimes she molts. You must have seen her when she was molting. Molting? Yes, bits of it fall off from time to time. The first time it happened, I thought she'd been cured. The whole thing fell off and landed in a little purple pile at her feet. There was, was some sort of white, scaly stuff, but basically her skin was clear. For a few days, maybe a week, her face was fine. And it grew back again. Oh. I've learned to live with the skin disease. But her paranoia. I can even deal with the fortune tellers, but now she's seen people like you. You're putting me in a category below fortune teller? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to insult you. The Everglades is an odd place to go for a second honeymoon, don't you think? Look, I, I said I was sorry. I've been very upset. My wife's recent obsession with alligators has just about done me in. She, she thinks they're in the toilet bowl. She showed me the pictures. She took pictures of alligators in the toilet bowl? No, in the lake. The pictures you took. Well, there were no alligators there, were there? She was screaming. Why did you take pictures of her screaming? She asked me to take her picture, and when I did, she started screaming. Why did you continue to take her picture? There are at least ten shots of... What the hell business is it of yours? What right do you have to open up our private stores? You must enjoy it, is that it? Private investigator picking scabs? I think you'd better leave, Dr. Smith. Yeah, I'll leave, but stay out of it. You hear me? It's none of your bloody business. See this mark on my hand? You know what that is? No, I don't. Neither do I. It's my profession, and I have no idea what it is. At least it's not purple. Thank God it's not purple. I was a little puzzled and somewhat alarmed by his rant about the skin disease. I'm not in the front running of private dicks, but I'd like to think my powers of observation were at least keen enough to take in a skin disease, particularly a big purple one. Certainly threw my previous suspicions out of whack. Solons had seemed like the murdering kind. But maybe I was wrong. Maybe they were both simply crazy. I was beginning to wish that they could go out and be crazy elsewhere. My office was feeling extraordinarily confined. I'm so glad you could come for dinner. It's been years since Roger and I have entertained. No, I'm sure it's not been that long. Where's Trixie? Ah, well, it's a rather melancholy topic. She's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. When did it happen? Last week. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm so sorry to have brought it up. She was such a sweet little... What do you call those dogs? Poor Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What a shame. You remember Trixie, don't you, Charles? Yeah, she bit me in the ankle. She was hurting you. Corky's dog bite. It's a hurting instinct. That felt like a bite to me. Oh, well, I think it's a shame. Yeah, too bad. What did she die of? Old age. Food poisoning. Oh. <laughs> Chrissy's always making a joke about my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you try it. <laughs> well... It certainly is nice seeing you two again. Have I changed much? Oh, well, no, hardly at all. Isn't it amazing, Roger, how people will lie to your face? Well, really, Chrissy, what did you expect me to say? Of course you've changed, but it's hardly noticeable. And it, is it, Charles? Mm. It, it, is it, Charles? What? Chrissy's, um, now for me, shop. Oh. That's a good one, Pamela. No, you you hardly noticed it. And unless, of course, you're face on, then it's really... Who asked you? Someone asked me, didn't they? I, I could have sworn someone asked me. I didn't mean a change in a physical sense, Pamela. I meant personally. Oh, well, Chrissy, it, you know, it has been years. All the more reason for you to know. Roger seems to think my character has changed. Isn't that right, Roger? Uh, dear, I don't think Pamela and Charles are interested in hearing about this. Well, Pamela, have it. If you and Roger are having problems, Chrissy, I don't think we should interfere. Then I have changed. But Roger's changed too, hasn't he, Charles? Are you asking me? Yes. Well, forget it, Charles. I think it's time we had dinner. That's true. We can always save it for later when we're good and drunk. Well, I hope you bring things in. Get me out of here. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I ran into her at the supermarket, and she was absolutely desperate that we come for dinner. I felt sorry for her, and what could I say? Besides, she used to be all right. He's not exactly A-OK -okay either, you know. Shh, I think they're coming. Would you shut up with your stupid skin? 
skin disease. Nobody's interested. Oh, I all the 17 invitations every night this week. It's been someone different. You know very well why. No, I don't. I'm spoiling your plan. Aren't I? What plan? I don't know what you... Soup's on. Oh, how lovely. Some soup, Pamela? Oh, yes, I'd love some. Charles? Uh, yes, please. Mm, Roger? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. You're dripping, Christine. There's no need to be euphemistic, Roger. Roger hates my skin disease. He keeps coming up with new and more challenging ways to describe my condition. I uh, meant the soup, dear. Oh! Did I drip into the soup? Did bits of me fall off into the soup? Oh. <clears throat> oh, well. No bother. It's forced. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sour cream? I had decided that in future, if either stones darkened my door, I would be cool, distant, and polite. I would quietly call the white coat people, and they would quietly pack whichever stones it was into their paddy wagon and drive quietly away. And I would never see either of them again. That is what I decided. I had several numbers at the ready. The local mental hospital, the police, and if all else fails, the crippled civilians. I'm sorry, Mr. Todd can't see you, Mrs. Stones. He's not handling your case. But I have evidence. He's trying to poison me. You can't go in. You can't stop me. Richard! He's trying to poison me. I tricked him, though. I invited guests this week, but I have samples of food from the week before. I don't want to see you, Mrs. Stones. Beef stroganoff. You might have wrapped it more carefully, Mrs. Soames. I didn't need any. I thought you'd better take it in for test. Get out of my office, Mrs. Soames. But I have evidence. This isn't evidence. This is old food. Now, would you please leave? He's turned you against me, hasn't he? I don't like liars. I never lied to you. Oh, yeah? You lied to your husband. Where's your skin disease, Mrs. Soames? What skin disease? The large purple one that hangs down all over your face. Oh, did he go on about that? Well, you know how dermatologists are. The slightest mark and he imagines a disease. Oh, so now I'm supposed to think he's crazy. Well, maybe he is. Maybe you are. Maybe you both are. I don't care anymore. Just get out of my office. You don't understand. And I don't want to. Why are you people hounding me? What have I ever done to you? I don't deserve this. I'm a decent guy. I'm a nice person. You think so, do you? Yes, I do. I should have turfed you out long ago, but I sat and listened to you. For a price. Well, I would still like you to leave, please. Supposing I told you that you could change, that you could become something quite other than what you are now. Are you a Scientologist? Right now, you are an ordinary man. You're like most people, Mr. Todd. You live in a cocoon of self-importance. You're not even very observant. And it's your job to be observant. Look at my face. Do you see those rays? Scaly patches. No. Look closer. You're not close enough. Get right up close. Now, can you see them? Well, yes. But they're not purple. No, they're not. Don't touch them. I wouldn't dream of touching them. No, I wouldn't if I were you. You see, I really do have a disease. I got it three years ago. We were in New York, visiting. My husband was busy at a meeting, so I decided to wander. Through Chinatown, Middle Italy, and then through the Bowery. And I was feeling good, for some reason or other. And I thought I'd do someone a good turn. And I saw this bag lady. So I put ten bucks in my hand, and I went up to her and clasped her hand with the ten bucks. And I held it for a few moments, looking into her eyes. She didn't look grateful, or even happy. She said, You're not above me, lady. Don't think that this can't ever happen to you. And she pointed to a sleazy yellow notice that had been tacked up to a pole. It looked like it had been put up by some crank. I thought it was a joke and turned to ask her about it. But she'd gone. Of course, I forgot about it. Till I started getting these odd marks on my body. First my hands, then my face. Your hands? Yes. See, I didn't want Roger to know, so I disguised the marks. 
I colored them purple. I even bought facial putty and started putting it on my face. Oh. One side. I suppose it was a test. I wanted to see what he would do. I wanted to see if he loved me. It was wrong to do that. But the disease was pervasive. It had invaded my body and my thoughts. Which disease? Roger started behaving very strangely. He started abusing me. Subtly at first and then more directly. He wants to kill me, but it's too late for that. She put a curse on me. Her comment to my good turn. You see, the yellow notice said, Beware female traps. They are carriers of a rare and incurable disease, Microbacterium leprae. Leprosy, Mr. Todd. Well, that's ridiculous. Leprosy isn't incurable. You can go to a clinic and get treated. Sulfur drugs, I believe. The disease is simply the manifestation of the curse. She's cursed me, Mr. Todd. The two of you should get treated immediately. The two of us? Roger has it? Yes. It's on his hand. Does he know? No. Well... He's been preoccupied, hasn't he? The odd thing is, Roger's right. I really did change. And so has he. He loathes me. And his entire being has become centered on his loathing. And it's all very odd, because I really did think we were such ordinary people. Oh. I like the fact that we're lepers. What? I enjoy being his big, bad witch. His purple crone. You think you're a nice person, don't you, Mr. Todd? Uh, you've heard my problem, and yes, you've been paid for it, but you still think you're a nice person. Mm -hmm. And all I have to do is touch you. Uh, I think that's what I'll do. Uh, think of yourself as litmus paper, Mr. Todd. Uh, We're about to engage in a little uh, Embarrassing. Stay away from me. All I have to do is touch you. <laughs> no. Pick a scab. Any scab. But don't scratch too deep. And don't look too closely at what is underneath. Beauty, as Lord Byron noted. Alligators in the Lake by Sally Clark, starring John Jarvis as Todd, Ron White as Roger, and Martha Burns as Chrissy, with Richard Partington, Maria Ricosa, and Susan Pontman. Original music was composed and performed by Wayne Kelson, with Laura Brownell on violin and Jack Mendelson cello. Series script editor is Sandra Rabinovich. Casting consultant was Beth Russell. Technical operations were by Glenn McLaughlin. Sound effects by Jean Sarazin. Production assistant, Heather Brown. Alligators in the Lake was produced and directed in Toronto by Jackie Maxwell. The executive producer of Vanishing Point is William Lane. Until next week, I'm Michael Kramer, wishing you good night.